Welcome to episode four of the Intergalactic Interdimensional University. I just wanted to mention something to you. Human beings seem to respect awareness or intelligence level quite a bit. If you have a certain amount of awareness, we consider you a friend or the best pet. If you have not enough awareness, we eat you. <laughs> That's why we don't eat dogs. And now, boy, look at that. Smart as a whip. Try that with a cow. Bear boy! Why, you dumb bastard. Let's eat him, Bill. Put some of the stupid fox sauce on him. If you don't have enough awareness, we eat you. The Big E, Einstein said, you'll never solve the problems of the human race from the same consciousness level that caused them. So therefore, our job here as human beings crawling around on this planet is to up our consciousness level. That's why I'm very proud of England. Because England just declared dolphins non-human persons. Dolphins have an IQ that equals humans. They play, which is a sign of creativity and humanness of IQ. And they masturbate. And they have no arms. <laughs> I'm supposed to be intelligent, and I can't figure that one out. Unless you pay an octopus heavily <laughs> and have a close relationship, you're in trouble. But dolphins are very, very bright. The fact that they talk like that, we don't respect them as equals. However, that form of squeaks and hisses is a form of communication 8,000 times more efficient than phonetic English. You must say, good morning, how are you, Charles? Well, a dolphin goes, and that's the whole Gettysburg Address. <laughs> and he can masturbate without arms. <laughs> Who's intelligent? We have a religion-dominated planet. That's why the aliens don't land. Why don't they land on the White House lawn? Well, they have a little meter. They scanned our planet and read dangerous asshole level. So they won't land because we are a, a, a nation, a world, a planet, a species of warring tribes that worship invisible concepts of a creator God. And here's the problem. The biggest blasphemy ever. All you religious people who may see this one way or another, I'm not attacking you. You have the right to your beliefs. Hey, you have the right to stick a hot screwdriver up your ass if you want. I'll watch it. Call me. However, I don't respect the lack of thought process when you think of God, the creator of all, the sustainer of all life, as a man. We don't think of him as a man. Yes, you do. Jehovah, he gets pissed. You ever read the Bible, the first book of the Bible? He stoned people for anything. Hey, look at my wife, just a bit stoner. Masturbation, stoning. This is true, I'm not making it up. Pissing on the north wall of a building, stoning. I think somebody was selling stones, don't you? <laughs> because it just seems to be ridiculous. When you make God into a big man, the creationist, I just, I shared a plane ride with a creationist. He said, God created everything in seven days. Six days. He got tired. God fatigued. How does God get tired? He's energy itself. And yet, his God, who worked six days, and it's hard work building all that we know as creation, especially hard stuff like snails. Oh, you can get them out with a little fork. You ever try to get a snail in the fucking shell? That's a pain <laughs> in the ass. God spent 17,000 years of Earth years just to build one jellyfish. Look at a jellyfish. It's like trying to build a log cabin out of snot. It's impossible. <laughs> but God did it. God invented human sexuality. He invented, I can see God, invented, he invented the female genital. And God went, hey, do you know I like this. We'll call this part the clitoris. I think this is going to be a big seller down the line. It also could be a lot of trouble. That's why I'm going to give the human men four of these. Or to save money, possibly two. In either case, I think they're going to go swell together. <laughs> How can you think of a big man in a workshop with an anchor building everything that exists? Well, 67% of Americans believe that Noah's Ark is history, not fanciful projection of mythological concepts in a book of poetry, but actual history. That's right. Then the big flood came, and God took two of every animal, every animal, from the little titsy fly, from the tiny dust mites, to the little bugs that live under a rhino's balls, and only there, <laughs> and brought two of each one, and all those animals, and put them on a huge boat, and gave them divine constipation. Because if he didn't, within two hours, 17 trillion tons, the equivalent of free Everest, Mount Everest, of poop, would have sunk that fucking boat. And yet you believe it. 
How come we live in a civilized country that broke the genetic code and we're going to outer space and we still talk about heaven as being up? He goes up to heaven. You know, Bill died and he went up to heaven. Well, there is no up. You don't believe me? Ask the astronauts. Heaven's another dimension. I believe in a heaven. I believe in the Tibetan Book of the Dead of Bardos. I think when your body dies, for some good reason, like for instance, eating any food that's not organic in America, <laughs> and drinking New York City water, which has in it, I'm not making this up, was on the crawl, must be real. New York City has 15 antispasmodics, 25 antidepressants, and a lot of estrogen from birth control pills in our water. That's why the feminization of the planet is happening. This is true. They have found 50% of male fish in a Potomac River are growing vaginas. <laughs> Can you imagine? When are they going to grow up? It's also in the, in the landscape in England. They found out that fauna and flowers are switching sex. When are they going to get smart? What do you have to do? See tits on an oak tree before you plant it? <laughs> Gentlemen, we have a lower sperm count than they ever saw before. Males are becoming females because a lot of the insecticides turn into estrogen. Then women who use birth control pills take a nice big piss after a beer bash. That goes in the river and I end up chuckling again and my nuts get little. <laughs> little babies are being born with smaller penises. We do something now or your son will have a dick the size of a squiggle on a French guy's hat. Would you like that, eh? Chuck. <laughs> we better do so. We better grow up. Yes, I do believe in, I don't want to use the word God because, you know, I was raised Catholic. I still can't fuck during a thunderstorm. <laughs> <laughs> to me, God is a gigantic king. He's a king. That's the problem. In the Middle Ages, they went, well, well, I can't imagine how so much, there must be like a king. And back then, kings did shitty stuff. You killed one of the king's deer, rip all his skin off, roll him in rock salt. I'm in a liberal mood. <laughs> when God got this, he did things like hot lava on the babies now. <laughs> why? Because I'm in a pissy mood and I drink my coffee and they're making noise. That's why. Can you imagine God as a person? What if he wakes up and got a sick stomach? Oh, I don't feel good. I fucking don't feel good. I gotta invent some shit today. Big zits before a date. Syphilis. <laughs> Cancer, high fever, and earthquake. <laughs> Yesterday got late, I invented. Flowers, sunshine, little kids, <laughs> clouds. Because <laughs> I'm a human. But I'm big and they call me God. But I'm given to the same frailty as a human being. I get into moods. Jehovah was a moody son of a bitch. Sometimes he had to prove his ego. You thought the rap stars had an ego. Well, look, when I wear two pounds of gold, I make all this shit and I'm really bold. I got a pistol and a distance and that's me. No, God was the first one. God wanted to show he was the man. So he went over to Abraham and he said, you know your son that you really love? I'd like you to take a bronze knife, cut his heart out, and burn it on charcoal in front of me. If you don't, I'm God. You know what I'm like when I'm moody. <laughs> so there was Abraham ready to kill his kid, and his kid's going, Dad, what about the bike? <laughs> 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 and God said, no, no, I'm just trying to prove I was the man. You want a God with an ego like that? You want a sadistic fucking un- forgiving prick as a god? You want to live into Pat Robinson, who has the IQ of a syphilitic lab rat, to tell you and interpret the religion to you, interpret God for you? Because you know there's another way to know God. To direct experience. To direct experience. You don't have to have a lot of LSD until you shit ball lightning and throw up paisley all over the place. Just try, like, fucking under 40 blankets with no air conditioning in August. <laughs> Eventually you hear a buzzing sound. That's your heart stopping. <laughs> Just briefly, hopefully. And you will meet God, and you will find out that he is what you are. Non-local total awareness. Zapped down to different forms, which we call the known universe and us. <laughs>